6.20 now on Friday evening. They, uh, this is still Oxford Street, it's still blocked as you can see. Although I went away and did some looking around the other areas and in the meantime of course they cleared the boat away. Um, so that obviously meant that they um, got all the protesters. The protesters, the main protesters were uh, bolted to the bottom of that boat so they must have un unbolted them somehow. That's the, that was the purpose of that uh, double ring that they had around the uh, site. Uh, they obviously achieved that but what they haven't achieved is to clear Oxford Circus because there's still a lot of protesters there. So, turns out what's happened is the reason why the pink boat is there um, shackled to a police van and not going anywhere with hundreds of police all around it is because uh, those cunning devils at Extinction Rebellion went around the other side when they got wind of what was happening, went up the road and they've kettled them. They've got a um, protest on this street, not a very big one, but enough to stop the car going through. And I suspect they've got a protest at the other end, which I'll go and have a look at in a minute. It's all, as I say, all still very peaceful. Police are looking slightly irritate, irritated now. Oh, actually, I think the police are being quite entertained, actually. They're smiling. Uh, earlier on the BBC said police aren't stopping protesters getting anywhere near Oxford Circus, which uh, that's just not true. I think that's the first time in my 50 years that I've heard something on the BBC that I actually know to be a lie, which is disappointing. And I suspect it was because they were trying to stop people turning up. This was about three o'clock this afternoon. Uh, it just wasn't true. Shoppers were walking past Oxford Street going shopping. Thousands of them. But that was the main part of the problem at Oxford Circus, that's why it was so busy, because there was thousands of shoppers. There were several hundred ex Extinction Rebellion, and then the world was trying to get by, and successfully, more or less, with a little bit of a barge and a push. Yeah, the car's not. The so they've just... It kind of blocks the port for them through, but oh, okay. I don't think it's going to work, because literally you can run further around. Oh, yeah, exactly. I mean, <laughs> there's so many roads in London. Yeah. Yeah. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. You think the police would have worked that out? They do work here. They're doing their best, I suppose, but... Yeah. All right, thank you. It's, they're sort of doing a large-scale version of the two circles they did earlier on around the um, Oxford Circus place. Blocked off this sort of area and then somehow arrest people sufficiently to block off that area. In fact, they're moving the van now with the uh, boat on. So yeah, here they come. They're, trying, they're not going to get through here because the police have got here. So that has, that has worked because they're not going to get around there. That's just, uh, Hope you're feeling fit. <laughs> Off they go. All these junctures, they know how to run, don't they? Goodness me. So they're off to block the next junction. To try and... Uh... Oh, I haven't had so much fun since 1987. If I was a policeman, I'd be getting really arrogant. I've done it anyway. I've got that. <laughs> there you go. Woo! That, so we're going to go around the corner now because the only other option the police have got, apart from arresting people, but they seem to have given up on that idea. Um, just people just come and sit where they, unless they can do the ring round a ring, they can't do a lot about it. So the only other option they've got now is to go backwards and turn down a side road, which is Middleton Place, uh, which is where we're going to go next. It is a bit of a standoff. Here's the plan, they'll gently push these people back now. Not by a lot though, just a step at a time. And I think the idea is that they get pushed back, or we get pushed back, to behind this road here, these two roads, and that gives the police a couple of options to turn left or right, uh, and then go down those roads until they come across the next set of Extinction Rebellion rebels, who are all there already, I think. Um, but what can you do? You've got to do something, haven't you? If you're the um, Greater Metropolitan Police, and Sajid Javid's watching on his television, and Sadiq Khan's watching on a 
the television somewhere else because I can't imagine they're in the same room. Ever. Everyone go back to Oxford Circle. Okay. They're going to let the boat go through. They're yeah, they're going to let it go through. They're going to let it go. Well, there you go. So uh, that's the word on the street, literally. Uh, they're going to let the boat go. Uh, and in fairness, boat's going to go in it let's face it so I spend all night doing this which is a good fun but it does get cold <laughs> the extinction rebels were addressed by one of the founders of the group dr gail bradbrook using the very effective technique of group repetition to ensure that everyone throughout the crowd was able to hear the information snag that Gail also had to point out was that no one could go anywhere immediately because Jenny, one of the protesters, was still glued to the road. After some time and some very gentle assistance by police medical experts, Jenny was liberated from the road surface and arrested. Police had agreed to allow the group to lead the boat on a procession towards a final symbolic stand outside the Energy Institute a few streets away, where the crowd of rebels would line the pavement as a guard of honour, allowing the convoy to pass. So the decision is that it will be a march to the Shell Institute uh, alongside the boat that's taken away. So we agreed to take that route to take it away. This is the start of the procession. 